and welcome to Photo Education Online. I'm Larry Lurcy, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about histograms and understanding what a histogram is and how we use it in photography. The histogram is basically this graph here showing the, the, the mapping of the pixels in the image. Now, um, the places you'll generally see this is either on the back of your camera with the preview, a lot of cameras will show a histogram with it, or in Photoshop when you're working in levels. But let's take a look at exactly what all this means. When, when you take an image and you zoom in all the way, it starts breaking up, and what you can see here is you've basically got a whole bunch of little squares or pixels. And they range anywhere from all the way down at the bottom being one or two or three, uh, being black all the way up to 255 which is just pure white and, and anywhere in between and what that does is this histogram is going to basically add up how many of the total black ones are there how many of the total white ones are there how many of each along the way and then it graphs it out so what this shows us is that in an image like this most of the information is down here at the bottom end. There's not a whole lot up at the white end. And if we look at the image, it pretty much verifies that. There's no real bright whites. You've got a few of these areas here that are really actually a light gray. They just look light compared to everything else, but there's not really any bright white. And so that makes sense when you look here at the histogram. There's not much up here. Most of the information is down here. In fact, a lot of it's dropping off to just complete black with no detail, which is going to be a lot of these areas down through here. At the other end of the spectrum, here's a shot where most of the pixels are up in this higher range. And again, you can see here, most of it is up, up at the lighter end and it starts dropping off and there's almost nothing in the complete black. There's a couple of little things down through there and that's probably some of these black specks in here. But for the most part, the bulk of this information, if you charted it out, would be up here in the higher end. Another way you can look at it is if we take a shot like this, which is basically just black, gray, and white, and you look at the histogram, you can see there's a line right here at the black, there's a line right here at the white, and a line down the middle for the gray. And what that means is pretty much all the information is, is either there, there, or there. So how do we use this in photography? Well, the way it helps us is to make sure that we have an image that is exposed properly. Let's take, for example, I'm going to start here. Here's a shot that was done at f8. And you might look at the back of the camera, and this looks just fine because the LCDs vary from camera to camera or depending on the lighting situation you're in or the angle you're looking at it. And so you can't really trust the, the way the image looks on the back of the camera. This may look just fine, and then all of a sudden you load it into the computer and it's, it's too light. And if you look at your histogram here, you can see that this is telling us that the whites are blowing out, that they're going off the edge here. You, know, you assume that this graph kind of trickles on down this way, but it's being cut off. And so what that's saying is there's a bunch of whites that have lost detail, and you can see that in here and here and here. Some of these white areas have lost detail. They're just pure white, which we don't necessarily want. At the other end, there's no real blacks. You can see that this has kind of gone to like a dark gray, but nothing is really in the black range. Now, we can kind of fix that. We can tighten that up a little bit in levels and bring the, the blacks in a little bit, but you're not going to recover these whites. So if I took this shot and I saw this on the back of the camera on the histogram, I would know, without even looking at the image, I could tell by the histogram that I was overexposed. So then we jump, jump down the next time to stop down to F11. Now this is a much nicer exposure than that one. You can see there's still some detail in here in the table. You can see the detail, but it's still mostly dark and black. Uh, there's some detail in the background, but it's pretty muted. And the highlights here are definitely light, but they're not really blown out. There's probably a few little areas that are blown out, but that's a pretty nice highlight overall. And if we look at the histogram, it shows that the highlights are tapering off really nicely. At the shadow end, um, we're missing a little bit of black at that end. But again, that's a lot easier to fix than trying to bring back those missing pixels. So now we'll go on to uh, F16. 
Now you can see the whole histogram is pretty much shifted this way now. We're, we don't have anything up top, and that is verified here by looking in these white areas that have been blown out before. Now suddenly they're gray. They're not white by any means. And the histogram shows us there's just all this empty area over here. The bulk of the histogram is down here at the far end. Now our blacks are cutting off pretty nicely, but um, overall this thing is too far to that end. So let's drop down even more to F22, and you can see this one is pretty much way too dark. And the histogram shows us that everything is shoved off here to the left. I mean, if you go, if you cut this down the middle, almost the entire histogram is on the bottom half of the scale and so you can see how that information is not going to be able to produce as nice of an image as this information where it's all right there and we can control how much we bring in those ends. Now the way you'll view this on the back of your camera is going to vary from camera to camera and you'll just have to get your user's manual out and figure out how to turn on that histogram but once you know how to to do it it's going to be a really valuable tool for helping you with exposure because this shot and this shot may look the same on the back of, of the camera, but this is the histogram that is going to work better for you than some of the underexposed ones. So anyways, that's just kind of a brief introduction into how the histogram works. I hope you will start um, trying to look into the histograms a little bit and using them in your exposure because I think it will really help your, your image making.